the first person to ever compete both as a man and a woman in U.S. professional boxing. Allow me to introduce you to Patricio Manuel. Got the right dick, no lefty walk in my truth. Don't fuck with my step team, crawl for you walk, run it. Catch me, got a sharp tongue, spit it, machete. On December 8th, 2018, the first trans man to ever box and win in U.S. history. The first person ever to compete as both a man and a woman in U.S. professional boxing. Allow me to introduce you to Patricio Manuel, a.k.a. Cacahuate, a.k.a. Peanut. Commonly mistaken for Latino, Pat's last name is commonly mispronounced as Manuel. Pat himself said that he doesn't take this mistake seriously because it's simply a slave name. On July 22nd, 1985, Pat Manuel was born to an Irish mom and a black dad in Santa Monica, California. Pat was raised by a single mother with help by his uncles and grandmother. Pat first knew something was different while attending elementary school in Gardena, California. And Pat's differences became obvious when he decided to share the inner workings of the girls' health class with the rest of the boys in school before proceeding to play toss around with the sanitary napkins that were passed out in the health class. Attending an all-girls middle school raised more questions and suspicions about Pat's gender identity. Pat also discovered Jeet Kune Do while in middle school, a form of martial arts popularized by Bruce Lee, and Pat immediately fell in love. Pat continued to train throughout his adolescence, except for a period in high school when he was hit with a heavy bout of anxiety and depression. Pat's grandmother encouraged him with a membership to L.A. Boxing and Fitness when he was 16 years old and Pat returned to the gym. At 17 years old, Pat had his first fight competing as a woman against a 32-year-old boxing veteran. Pat didn't win the fight, but he was able to meet Charles Williams in Long Beach that day. Charles Williams, former IBF heavyweight champion between the years of 1987 and 1993, This connection to Charles Williams would send Pat further on his journey in boxing. Under the tutelage of Charles Williams, by 2003, Patricia Manuel had developed a buzz in women's boxing. Unfortunately, that was the same year that Charles Williams would no longer be coaching Manuel. Not long after severing ties with Charles Williams, Pat approached Roberto Luna, a respected boxing trainer in California. From there, Pat and Roberto began their 10-year coaching relationship. Pat and Roberto Luna developed a strong bond, both describing their relationship more as family than coach and athlete. While working with Luna, Pat won five national championships between the years of 2006 and 2012. By this time, Pat was identifying as an openly gay female butch. By 2013, Pat was preparing and training to compete as one of the first women boxers in modern Olympic history. Unfortunately, Pat was hit with another bout of depression after losing in Olympic trials. Pat lost his prospective spot to compete as one of the first women in Olympic boxing. During this bout of depression in 2013, Pat also discovered the Brown Boy Project, where Pat learned that he was more than just an athlete. After joining Brown Boy Project and connecting with other queers, Pat realized himself that there was more discovery and exploration needed for his own journey with his own gender identity. Almost immediately, Pat began identifying as genderqueer, By June 2013, Pat was identifying as transmasculine. And by September 2013, Pat had his first testosterone injection. 
Though his gender identity was transitioning, Pat had no desire to transition outside of boxing. And with this, Pat began to research and study the requirements and laws surrounding trans people competing in sports. When Pat began his transition, there were legal and medical requirements in order for a trans man to compete. But by 2015, female-to-male athletes could compete without restriction. Trans men didn't need any hormone replacement, any surgery, or any legal identity changes to compete as a man. However, the rules were not the same for women and have become even more stringent since. When he began his transition, Pat was still training with Roberto Luna at The Rock, a church-affiliated gym run by Reverend Joshua Canales, who is also pastor at Mission Ebenezer. After coming out as trans to his trainer, Roberto Luna, Pat decided to come out to Reverend Joshua Canales, who ran the gym as well. After coming out to the pastor, Pat was hit with the line, Did you pray about it? This was not the response that Pat wanted or expected from a man that he admired and held at such high regard. Not long after, a documentary crew began following Pat and filming his experiences as the first trans man boxer. Reverend Joshua Canales, pastor at Mission Ebenezer, made it very clear that the documentary crew was not welcome to shoot Pat at the rock. It was hard to find a picture of the pastor without his wife, honey. Amen. Pretty. Throwing his family in our face. You know what they say about men in church. How you doing? I see you, Pastor. I think you look better with your beard. It would be a chop on the realness for me. Pat was told that he was still welcome to train, but it was very clear that he was not allowed to be visibly trans while being associated with the gym. When asked about the events that resulted in Pat feeling unwelcomed at the Rock Gym, Reverend Joshua Canales stated, and I quote, She could train here like anybody else, but I personally do not support Pat transitioning. During the same period, Roberto Luna cut off his 10-year professional relationship training Pat as a boxer. However, this exile and betrayal did not stop Pat's transition. Pat continued going forward with his medical transition and getting top surgery. While recovering from top surgery, Pat drove to Duarte Youth Boxing Program in search of Victor Valenzuela. Valenzuela, a renowned boxing trainer who is actually part of Boxing Hall of Fame, reassured Pat that he would be trained just like any of the other guys at Duarte. Valenzuela kept his promise of treating Pat like any of the other guys in the gym. Valenzuela never even outed Pat to the other guys in the gym. The guys that Pat trains next to assumed that Pat was a cisgender man until Pat began to make headlines. In transitioning from female to male, Pat not only learned more about himself, but he learns more about the world and how the world views black men. Pat quickly noticed the difference in how police treated black men versus black women. Up until now, Pat was seen as a black woman. But in 2014, while driving through Koreatown, Pat was stopped by the police and realized that he was no longer seen as a woman. Pat recalls feeling humiliated and furious that the cops could treat him with such disrespect so casually. The cops insinuated that Pat had been drinking, on drugs, or in possession of something illegal. By 2016, almost two years into Pat's transition, he was okay to fight in the men's amateur division. But then the real question arose. Would anybody be willing to fight Pat? 
would anybody be willing to fight a transgender man? Or would they all use the John Sullivan approach and use Pat's gender identity as an excuse to avoid defeat by a transgender man? Pat was searching for a fight, but all of the guys were using the excuse that they weren't willing to dishonor a woman. That's funny, because I've never come across a demographic where there weren't at least some men who were willing to dishonor a woman. After several unsuccessful attempts to get in the ring with another male boxer, Pat realized that it was illegal for boxing officials to share his trans identity with other potential boxers. Pat decided that he would take advantage of the legality surrounding his transness when it came to his next fight. Pat's first amateur fight was with boxer Aiden Ochoa. Pat admits that he and trainer Valenzuela shared that Pat was a national champion, but purposefully omitted that Pat previously competed as a woman. Pat won his first fight competing as a man to unanimous decision, Pat won against Aiden Ochoa. Unfortunately, Aiden and his father, Alberto, spread word around the boxing community, outing Pat and encouraging other fighters not to compete against Pat. It made it harder for Pat to get fights. But fortunately, Pat was back in the ring again. And not long after, he met Eric Gomez. Eric Gomez president of Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Boxing, quickly became a fan of Pat. Eric's approval of Pat solidified Pat as a pro boxer. In fact, Eric put Pat on the Golden Boy fight card in 2018. This would be Pat's first professional fight as a man. December 8th, 2018. Patricio Manuel versus Hugo Aguilar. Congratulations, I am so happy for you. Walk us through what you're feeling emotionally right now that you've made your pro debut. Oh man, I, I think if everyone knew what it took to get to this point, it's been almost two years since I've been in the, the ring. ring even. <laughs> Hello. We all want to hear you, Pat. Oh. What I was saying was, I think if people knew what it took to get to this moment, it's been almost two years since I've been in the ring. And I just got to say, my opponent, my hat's off to him. He came there to fight. He was fighting me the whole time. He fought me as a man, and I have so much respect for him. Um, I hear some fans aren't happy. It's okay, I'll be back. I'll make you happy then. You tell them that. So everyone in life has a purpose, and you never gave up on your dream. You always went and continued to fight. What is your purpose moving forward? I can do the last part. What is your purpose moving forward? What's next for you? Oh, what's next is I've got some naysayers out there. I need to prove that I deserve to be. Yes, you heard correctly. They were booing him after he won. Since this groundbreaking, history-making fight in 2018, Pat has not been back in the ring as a professional boxer. Multiple injuries, pandemic, aging, and boxers being afraid of being defeated by a transgender man. You name it. Pat hasn't been back in the ring, but Pat also has not lost his purpose. It appears as if Pat has found another calling in advocacy. Pat has become one of the voices who speaks out against social injustice and social inequities involving the Black community, the LGBTQ community, and other communities of color. Living visibly and speaking openly, Pat appears to be happy in his non-white interracial relationship as he awaits his next bout in the ring. I'll leave you with a quote from Patricio Manuel. Sport allows us a vehicle to let down all other identities we have and just be involved in one singular activity. In that involvement, 
we can see we are all human.